Great. Are we all here, all present and accounted for? I think so. We are. Hey. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Good well, evening. Good evening and welcome. It's so great to have you all here with us for our first ever The Beauty Triangle webinar. Um, I hope that you and your families are all safe and well at home. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Francesca White and I'm the founder and curator of Beauty Triangle. So before we start, um, a very quick recap. You are not being recorded, nor will your face show up on the screen. I know that's often an anxiety with Zoom webinars. Um, so no worries if you have no makeup on and a big glass of wine in your hand. Um, if, however, you would like to ask any questions, we will be doing an enormous, anonymous Q&A at the very end. So there'll, um, there'll be a little Q&A box at the very bottom of your screen and you can ask your questions in that and we'll do our very best to answer them at the end. So a quick recap for any new faces here tonight. The Beauty Triangle was originally started as a way to educate and empower audiences on all aspects of their health and well-being, um, and crucially always from a 360 degree holistic standpoint. So prior to lockdown, we were hosting monthly events in London, always with an amazing rotating panel of three practitioners, um, hence why we refer to them as our Beauty Triangle. Obviously tonight is going to be a slightly different format. However, we hope that the webinar still inspires you and informs you, even if that's just virtually. Um, so this evening, we are going to be joined by a super inspiring panel of ladies, um, including aesthetic doctor, Ms. Sharina Balaratnam, Pilates instructor, Paola Dilanzo, and mm -hmm. clinical hypnotherapist, Fiona Lam. And they are here with us tonight to discuss a really important topic, which is, how to survive in self-isolation. After all, I think, you know, most of us are now very um, well acquainted with the detrimental effects that the quarantine um, can start to have on our, on our minds and our bodies. So really this is just our way of enabling us to bring a little bit of self-care into lockdown. Um, Sharina will be talking to us about how to maintain healthy skin from home. Paolo will be talking to us about at-home fitness and Fiona will be giving us some simple techniques to keep anxiety at bay. Um, so I'm going to hand over to our speakers to say a very quick hello, and then we're going to get cracking with the questions. So Sharina, would you like to start? Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. I hope that you are keeping safe and well during this time. I'm Sharina Balaratna. I'm the founder and medical director of the Aesthetics Clinic in Beaconsfield. I come from a background in the NHS, 12 years in reconstructive plastic surgery and burns. During this time, I've gained a wealth of knowledge in anatomy and functional skin. I went on to pursue a master's actually at UCL about 15 years ago in laser science to treat skin cancer. And it was really during this time that lasers and energy-based devices were really coming into fruition in the world of aesthetic space. Cut long story short, I now wholeheartedly specialize in aesthetic medicine and my clinic is five years old in a week's time based in Beaconsfield. We specialize in advanced treatments for the skin, face and body. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sharina. It's an absolute joy to have you here with us tonight. Uh, Paula, over to you. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I am Paula Delanzo and I'm the founder of Paula's Body Bar, which I created the company six years ago. However, I've been in health and fitness since 1988. So yeah, it's quite a while now. I'm almost 50. So I've seen all the different trends, all the different types of fitness, but my passion is Pilates. So today I'll be talking about a lot about Pilates, but also my PPB method, which I also created. Um, it is a fusion of dynamic Pilates, ballet bar conditioning, functional training, and core strengthening. Um, basically, tonight I really want to get across to you about the fact that the virtual world and the virtual world that I've been thrown into has really helped a lot of people come together and create such a brilliant community. Amazing. Well, thank you for joining us, Paula. Really excited to hear from you. And Fiona. Hi. Oh, someone's doorbell. <laughs> oh if that was me, my dogs would be barking. Um, my daughter would come and get it. I'll miss it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So, children. My name is Fiona Lamb. I am a clinical hypnotherapist at the Hale Clinic on Harley Street. 
and I specialize in anxiety, addictions, emotional eating, and insomnia. And I also have a sleep, um, a sleep. I also have a meditation app called Mind Detox. And I think meditation is so important right now. And it's a really good tool that we can use. Um, you know, self care is all about well being, and it's really caring about how you feel. So I'm going to be talking about that and how we can, yeah, care about how we feel. Perfect. I think we are all in need of your Mind Detox app right now, Fiona. Um, let's get started yeah. then with the first of our panellists, Ms. Sharina Balaratnam. Um, Sharina, straight into skin. I mean, I don't know about everyone else who's watching this, but I found that my skin sort of fluctuates enormously. Um, you know, it's, it's overly dry and sensitive and then suddenly it's breaking out and being very badly behaved. So how do you advise that we restore balance to our skin at a, at a time like this? You know, Francesca, that is a great question because the word balance means so many things. We know that embryologically, our skin comes from deep within, it comes from a nervous cell, it supplies everything from our gut function to our skin. So we're all interconnected in so many ways. And what we're going through right now during this time is a period of, you know, unsettled. There is a little bit of underlying anxiety with everything that's going on around us. And that's something that we really need to be very mindful of and also accept. This is a time where we have been put in, I would say, a necessary pause in both our personal and our professional lives. But it's temporary. Hopefully it's not going to be forever. And we will all come out the other side. But nonetheless, it is unsettling for a lot of people. So funnily enough, when I think about myself, my skin is starting to go a little bit dry too. I've taken the opportunity during this time to connect with a lot of our patients on a daily basis. And the one common theme, just like you, Francesca, most of our patients are saying the same thing. My skin is dry and it hasn't been that dry before. Mm -hmm. um, my skin feels just a little bit more sensitive and it hasn't been before. And my skin feels like it's just breaking out and it's bubbly a little bit more. So guess what? We are just, whether we are adapting, which is another topic, or just feeling a little bit unsettled, we are producing a little bit more extra cortisol. So that is a stress hormone. And when mm. we produce a little bit more cortisol more than usual, and this is, a, this is a hormone, and it's produced by the adrenal glands, the tiny little gland that sits on top of the kidneys, that hormone is responsible for us to go. It wakes us up in the morning, it makes us go. Running away from a tiger, running away from you know, extreme situations. And when we have this low-grade sustained amount of cortisol in our system, we are going to produce a little bit too much oil in our system. We are going to break out. And guess what? We may not be doing the treatments and the therapies that we would be doing in clinics, for example, like the exfoliation treatments, dermabrasion, hydrofacials, the light chemical peels. So guess what? We are going to get blocked. So as a result, I think the first thing to do is to accept that we are in the situation. And that's really, really key. Find ways to find balance. And that balance can come in so many forms meditation, exercise. I'm excited to hear about Paula's and uh, Fiona's uh, descriptions because that is really, really key. And do you know what? At the end of the day, I'm making the most of this situation because when I think of the true narrative, what do we all want to get out of the situation too? I want to be better. I want to be stronger. I want to be more positive. So we can make changes. Starting with that, that will be really key. Next, we go on to the skincare. So that's where I come in. Okay? <laughs> And, and from the skincare point of view, I think we need to be mindful. So this whole platform is fantastic because it educates everybody all over again. So mm -hmm. let's take a long, hard look at the things that we are using. I love glycolic acids. They remove the top layer of dead skin. So perhaps it's worth introducing a little bit of that, even with gentle cleansers. I love salicylic acid. This is a beta hydroxy acid good for the extra amounts of oil secretion that we're producing deep in the sebaceous glands. So it might be that we need to start looking to introduce some of those into our skincare system if we haven't done already, or if we are currently using these things, then now's a great time to step it up because we don't have to go out, we don't have to wear makeup, and guess what? We can up the ante on our regimes. So it's time to start really thinking, let's, look at, uh, let's get a long, hard look at how to achieve balance and uh, that's where I'm going to start. Started already. 
No, that sounds great. I love the idea of upping the ante right now. And um, so yeah. dry, dry skin on the, the face, obviously, I, I think we've, we've spoken about, but what about dry skin on the hands? I'm sure I'm the same as everyone else, you know, constant hand washing, all of these alcohol-based hand sanitizing gels that, you know, they're, they're causing a lot of sort of irritation and cracking and dryness. How can we maintain um, very good health um, and hygiene while still protecting our skin? Again, another fantastic question. Every day I'm hearing this on the phone, myself included, and this is where it gets interesting. It's not a local problem. It's not a national problem. It's, it's, it's a universal problem. We're all in this together. Now, I want to break this down into two steps. I love the fact that everyone is washing their hands every day. And that's really, really key. But I want to separate the two. When we're washing our hands on a daily basis at home, maybe we can just stick to the soap and the water. Spend that time, that 20 minutes with the soap and the water. Don't, uh, 20 seconds, I beg your pardon. 20 minutes is a long time. But then, <laughs> but then when we are going out, that's when to bring in the alcohol-based press. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, when you drink excess. Absolutely. So you maybe don't need to bring so tough on the skin on a daily basis when you're at home. But when you are doing that outside exposure, that's when you need to step it up. So hopefully that will minimize the amount of exposure to the alcohols, the stringent agents. So that's, that's two things I wanted to mention. So then when it comes to the application, what really is going on with the skin? We are drying out the top layer of skin and we need to respect that it is an oil layer, which is what the epidermal layer, that top layer of skin is made of. And that oil layer is just taking a bit of a bashing right now and it's disruptive. So we have a disruptive skin barrier. It's going through a little bit of inflammation, but because this has been going on for now almost four and a half weeks, it may be chronically inflamed. And what happens there, you get something called transepidermal water loss. We're losing extra amount of moisture through our skin that we probably didn't experience quite so much before. That's number one, dehydration. Number two, the skin becomes inflamed. It might even look red, a bit angry, a little bit cracked, so we may need to use anti-inflammatories together with emollients as well. I'll come to that in a second. And then the next thing to be respectful of, if it really starts cracking, then we really need to take action fast. So think about the topicals that you're putting on. You can even use topical vitamin C on your hands, and that's a great solution. We have topical vitamin Cs with anti-inflammatories built into it, perfect for this time. And the type of cream that you use, maybe slightly more emollient, slightly more petroleum based, slightly more glycerin based as well. So that way you're bubble wrapping that epidermal layer, that top skin layer. When you're bubble wrapping it, you're giving it an opportunity to reestablish its skin function. And we can do that. I'm doing it at home as well because I've had to up the ante on this. But I think the key thing is water at home, soap and water, 20 seconds. And then when you're doing your going out, that's when to bring the alcohols in. I think that's really, really smart advice. Interesting about the vitamin C and the hands. I, I didn't know that one. I love, um, I love learning something new every time I speak to you, Shrina. Um, so I've been to your aesthet aesthetics clinic in Beaconsfield numerous times. And so I very much know that you're a huge believer in these very manual hands-on techniques, things like manual lymphatic drainage and, and facial massage. So I, I'm wondering if, if there's a place for that in sort of quarantine when we are at home. Is, is there a way that we can integrate these more sort of DIY manual techniques into our regimes and and bring self-care into the into the bathroom in that way absolutely you know self-isolation does not mean we're completely self-isolated you know we are so connected digitally as we are today we can learn so much on the internet in terms of facial massage and movement as well i know we've had mm -hmm. um you know the beauty triangle in terms of you know previously your colleagues have showed how to do this so there is so much accessible online that we can learn from in terms of facial manual lymphatic drainage and beyond look at exercise exercise is the best way of lymphatic drainage so even those high intensity bursts you know really does flush out the toxins so you know mm -hmm. paula's going to cover that beautifully and then in terms of what we can actually do now in clinic we we do do this manually and at home I think it's really important to form rituals I don't like calling them routine I like rituals because when we carry out rituals we're literally doing what we're doing in clinic and bringing it live to the bathroom to our bedrooms and all of that and if you think about what rituals bring it brings a form of self-love giving yourself that attention which we're all used to delivering to others on a daily basis and it's that whole analogy of when you're in a plane 
and if something bad happens, you know, when the oxygen comes down, they always say, sort yourself out first and work, you know, with children. I don't understand that. I don't have children, but I cannot imagine that, you know. So I would always say, we're always the last to give ourselves that love. When patients come into clinic, they love the contact, that social interaction as well. And that releases also something called oxytocin. I think a lot of you may have heard of this hormone oxytocin. Uh, oxytocin is produced when we're breastfeeding, when we're about to deliver. So it's a bonding hormone. It connects us in so many different ways. And if we can get some oxytocin even more now into our lives, guess what? It's going to reduce our anxiety. It's going to reduce our stress levels. It's going to reduce those cortisol that I spoke about, those hormones released by the adrenal glands. So I think we need to up the ante and taking time. And we're so used to belonging in a hustle culture, running for the trains, running from the tubes, going too fast. And I think now that the pause button has been forced upon us, now's the time to bring it home. I miss my team. I normally get this from them once a month without fail. And I can't do that right now. So I'm spending the time on incorporating my skin regime and I'm loving the time that I'm giving myself, thinking about the application process, massaging my skin and actually bringing that home with me. And I feel like when we release our own oxytocin, we're going to, we know clinically that it's going to make us feel better for longer and longer. I agree. I think the power of touch is so important. I mean, I've started um, body brushing every morning, not only because, you know, apparently yeah. it has amazing sort of anti-cellulite properties, but I think it's a really invigorating way to start the day. And there's something very satisfying about, about yeah. sort of starting your day on the right, but with that, with that ritual, as you so rightly called it. Um, so Sharina, whilst we're in lockdown, how can we be spring cleaning our bathroom cabinets and sort of, you know, what, from your perspective, what should we be chucking out when it comes to our skincare? What should we be doubling up on? Great point. Get rid of everything that you haven't used for a very long time. Because guess what? If you've not used it for a long time, chances are you're not going to use it again. So get everything out of the cupboard, put it out there. You'd be shocked at how much nonsense we have. I did this the other day. It was horrific. It's horrendous. I'm amazed at how much it has expired. I always say that little lipstick that I'm going to keep for a rainy day. No, you just won't do that. Okay. And that little mascara that you're going to say, no, not going to happen. Get rid of everything. Streamline everything as much as you can. So number one, I'm going to say detoxify your makeup. All right. Number two, I'm actually going to say, even look at your brushes, make sure they're clean, make sure they're not clumped. It's amazing how much bacteria and dust and debris that we collect just by throwing things under the radar where we just cannot see. And then also look at your skincare. Now, think about what you're using. Check the expiry dates. You'd be surprised at how we get given things for Christmas, New Year, birthdays, etc. And we might be picking and choosing what we use, our favorite sometimes, but we might have let things expire. Now, if something has expired, it is not going to give you the activity that you are looking for. And by that, I mean, it's not gonna give you the result. Now, patients come to us because they're looking for results. If something has expired because they've had a brand new set for Christmas, we're not gonna get the result that you want. So check in with that first, expiry dates. And then the next thing is think about from a seasonal point of view as well. The same ingredients that apply for winter may not be the same ingredients that you may need even now. So nothing has changed for me. We still have to apply these seasonal variations and, and that's why it's really important for us to connect with our patients. I've been connecting with our patients pretty much every day, apart from Sunday, uh, since the clinic has closed four and a half weeks ago. And we are optimizing skin regimes on the phone. I'm blessed. I know at least 95% of the patients that walk through my door and I know them well. So we are on escalated protocols. So I'm able to say and articulate, right, this is what you're currently on. I think we need to start moving away from some of these ingredients and moving you towards something with less anti-inflammatory because we've got you through the winter time now. We need to bring in more antioxidants because we're going to see that sunshine and gosh, look, look at the sky out there. It's beautiful. So we need those antioxidants, that vitamin C, and we need to photoprotect the skin and really optimize against future sun damage. So I think in terms of what we should do is finally don't wear any makeup. You know, this is a great opportunity to go bare. You know, everybody's breathing, meditating, spending that energy. So allow your skin a chance to breathe. No one's going to see you for a while. 
<laughs> agreed apart from us on this zoom webinar it's Absolutely. the first time i've worn makeup in about three weeks Likewise. <laughs> I mean, Sharina, you, you've very much sort of made the point, which is is really correct, actually, that we're clearing out, but we're also replenishing with the right things for the seasonal time, even yes. if it you know, is that we're only getting an hour in the sun every day. How can people still get access to these products? Am I right in thinking you've now got sort of a virtual sort of store where people can still be buying these topical products until they can get back out into the shops? Absolutely. Yes, Francesca. So we launched our online store just over a month and a bit ago. And for us, it was really important that patients feel connected to the clinic because they are on skin protocols and skin regimes, either on themselves or they're on integrated protocols, topical skincare integrated with lasers, radio frequency, microneedling, all sorts of the other tech that we have in the clinic. And our patients come to us for one thing. They want a result. They want to see the success of their result that they can see and they can feel. And with that, we need to communicate with them because Phase one skincare will be different from phase two and three and so forth. So a lot of our patients also come from out of town. They come from up north, west, and the southwest and beyond. So they may not be able to get into the clinic. And guess what? They certainly can't come in now. So it's great that we have the opportunity to speak on the phone. Now we also have telecommunication. So we're doing a lot of uh, Zoom calls with patients every day. And I'm able to take them through that regime and get things posted out to them as well. So the online stores really helped. We've also created at-home facials. So this is brand new um, that is going to take their result next level because we're going to be in this for a little while. So to be able to incorporate that exfoliation at the next level, to be able to do that routinely so that we get them through to the other side and the results will continue to drive forwards, hopefully in the autumn and the winter. Amazing. And I mean, the, the idea of an at-home facial is completely brilliant. Hopefully it means that we'll all re-emerge from this, you know, not looking quite as haggard as we all feel. Um, and I loved your point where you said, you know, we don't need to be wearing makeup. because I, I completely agree. I think it's a lovely opportunity to let our skin breathe. And I've also been seeing it as a really valuable time, I suppose, to be doing a lot of these treatments that we might consider a little punchier than the normals. I suppose the ones that have slightly more downtime. So I suppose final question for you, Sharina, what are the safe yet highly effective treatments we can be doing at home that, that means that when we do finally come out of quarantine, we look like the best versions of ourselves? Well, firstly, think about the skincare regimen that you are actually on. A number of uh, patients out there are not patients yet, and they may not be using anything. And then on the flip side, a number of patients out there are patients, whether they're my patients or ours or beyond. So think about what you're on. And I have a philosophy, begin anywhere, begin now. So listen to things like this webinar, listen to all of the information that's around you, and you can select the right things for you. I'm very happy to offer uh, Zoom consultations as well. And it's amazing with the quality of the lenses that we have nowadays, you can actually see so much. And being able to take somebody through a regimented protocol is, is really, really key at this point. And start there. Next, for someone who is a little bit more advanced in their protocols, now's the time to step up on a couple of key ingredients, glycolic and salicylic acids. Those hydroxy acids are great for exfoliating the top layer of dead skin, penetrating and managing those oil glands. And you can actually take that up as well. Chemical peels and those ingredients come in different strengths, and now it's time to up the ante. So we can do that over the phone as well with things that are a little bit more prescriptive. And the other things that we can up are topical vitamin C. We can go from 15 to 20% and, and so forth. And then the other thing to also think about are those at-home facials. So those are the more manual therapies that we can do, which I have also personally brought back home. Now, Science has come a long way and it, science has come into our aesthetic space beautifully. I felt that 15 years ago, which is what drew me to this side of my career in anesthetic medicine. And we saw radio frequency evolve. So in the clinic, I have a radio frequency treatment. It tightens the skin naturally, safely by stimulating our own wound healing responses really beautifully. And we can trigger collagen production in a natural way. But guess what? We also have the at-home version, and it's the only one that has received FDA approval as a home device. So the newer technology, which is an NDMED 3D, that can actually be used at home to actually help the skin stimulate and rejuvenate. And that's really key because a number of our patients who maybe already started on those radio frequency protocols, as we went into shutdown, they're probably thinking, oh my goodness, now what? 
well, now we have a new one. We can continue that at home, which is fantastic. So hopefully when they come out on the other side, they've been escalating all the way through. So nothing's changed. And then on another side, I think about the amount of time I'm spending on webinars and, you know, on the phone, etc. now. So guess what? I'm spending more time in front of the computer than I have in a long time. So I think it's making me a little bit more wired at night. So I need to switch off, believe it or not. So we have, I can't wait to hear Fiona's uh, med meditation. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, seeing, seeing, listening to what you have to say. Again, Paula, all these things we have to bring into play to bring balance. But at the end of the night, we need to switch off. The ritual of showering, the ritual of the home care. And now I actually have my Deas Pro LED mask and I've brought it home. So guess what? I take that mask. Is professional I put it on my face last thing at night I put it onto the mode that I want to and I switch off and guess what that forces me to go to sleep that's amazing I must say this is the first time that I've managed to dig into my collection my vast collection of face masks I mean everything from a cellulose to an LED to a microneedling mask I've, I've done it at the moment so um Thank you, Sharina. That was really, really interesting. And I think has given us a lot of food for thought. Um, and I suppose, yeah, whatever we're doing, when we do get outside, it's a nice layer of SPF and then, and then we're on our way. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharina. Um, on to our second panelist, Paula Delanzo, who you've all met now. Um, so Paula and I met, well, I, I was trying to think, Paula, how many years ago it was that you set up PBB, but you said six years six ago. Six years ago. <laughs> I mean, time yeah. flies. It seems like a long Absolutely. time ago since I first found you in your film studio. Um, we're yeah. really, really excited to have Paula here with us tonight. She was actually struck down herself with COVID a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, thank you so much for, obviously. Oh, thank you for having me. Joining, so happy to be here. Not at all. So Paula, I, I don't know how you found it. I very much feel that we're quite divided when it comes to quarantine fitness. I mean, there are some people who are finding daily escapism through runs and walks. And then there are other people who are perfectly content just to be at home and on the sofa. Yeah. And that's great too. But from yeah. your perspective as, as a fitness instructor, why is sort of keeping our bodies strong and feeling fit so important, you know, particularly now that we're in quarantine? We're just pointing out the whole, Sharina reiterated upping the ante. So I've seen three quarters of my clients or most of my clients upping the ante. And I believe that upping the ante for them has been because they need to have a sense of community. That's number one. Number two, obviously, if you're stuck in the house and you're not doing your daily routine, you're not as physically active, this online um, platform that we've provided has not only given routine it's also given them obviously that escapism from the children if you're furloughed it gives you that routine and obviously physical um, activity has always and always will be like a magical pill so if you could take a pill that made you feel elated that threw off endorphins in your body that made you feel it physically strong aligned functional would you take it i would yeah absolutely you, you can it's not a pill <laughs> so if we talk about the different spectrum so we've got people up in the ante as shireen said and god let's talk about body scrubbing as soon as i came out of that whole COVID 19 hole my body was so dry. i'm like <laughs> i was like oh my trying gosh, to get the jams i'm off. loving this because i actually now and you've talked about hustle the daily grind the daily hustle Okay, I've got children here, I've got my partner, but I'm not running, I'm not running anymore. So it's given us time and it's given us time to think about what we want to do for ourselves. And I think that's very important. So mine was body brushing, like furiously body brushing. And it's worked by the way. Anyway, any tips later you can give me. Um, and as far as exercise, uh, obviously exercise is brilliant for your body in that it keeps you injury free. My, my form of exercise, which is the PPB method, is an integration and a fusion of dynamic Pilates and ballet bar conditioning. So I feel like it's a one-stop shop for alignment, for core strength, um, to, keep you, to, to keep the weaker muscles strong, to lengthen the tight muscles, and obviously that alignment and that correction of alignment, particularly when we're in um, isolation is important because obviously we're now slumping over desks, children, you know, it can, and you know, when you become a little bit 
Like, I'm not saying that we're negative. We're going to stay positive. I always say, think about the highs, not the lows. <laughs> you kind of get that, uh, you know, so yes, physical exercise is brilliant, not only for the physical well-being, but the mental well-being. So yeah. when you exercise or you partake in a group exercise class, you have that sense of connection. But then at the end of the class, you also feel, I don't know, it's that sense of achievement, achievement, that body confidence. And obviously you feel brilliant within yourself. So you're working from your inside out and you're not just thinking about aesthetics at this point. You're thinking about how can I get through the day? Mm. So it's, yeah, it's so I think true. physical fitness is so important. And tell us a little bit about your PBB method. So as you mentioned earlier, it's, it's sort of fusing yeah. the dynamic Pilates with the bar. And look, I, I've been to your classes now for many years, so I can yeah. really vouch for the fact that they're a lot of fun. You have high energy. Yeah. I think everyone loves being in your classes, but there's still a yeah. serious workout. So Absolutely. <laughs> and, and that's important yeah. right now. But um, I, I suppose, mm. how, how does the Pilates work? And, and what, it, what exactly is it doing to our bodies that, it, that we need so much right now? So Pilates is brilliant in that, number one, it aligns the body, improves your posture. And with good posture, you can really focus on brilliant core strength. So if you have poor, poor posture, and Fiona can vouch for this, if you're not sitting up tall and you're not breathing correctly, so if you're slouching, your breath is inhibited, you can't take that full breath. And without the full breath and the centering, you can't get your core activated. So your core is the powerhouse that keeps you aligned, that protects the spine, that protects the pelvis and keeps your entire body working at its optimal level. So you integrate breath, you integrate, integrate alignment, you integrate core strength. So, um, which we're gonna to touch on a little bit later, I think. But yes, the, the whole, um, the, all the principles of Pilates allow you to, like I said before, strengthen weaker muscles, align the body into your neutral spine, neutral pelvis. Um, think about working functionally, working through all the planes of movement. So you've got a healthy spine. And then obviously it's not just physical, it's that mind-body connection. So you've got the breath, you've got the centering, and you've got the alignment. And that obviously keeps you not only physically, like we said, physically strong, but mentally strong. And in these times, which are really challenging, I think that's super important to integrate the physical with the mental. I agree. I think what's so clever about your approach, Carla, is that it's very much applicable to, you know, women of our age. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure many people have their kids joining in probably to a virtual classes. Yeah. It's suitable <laughs> for those who are at the sort of more mature end of the spectrum, sort of our, our grandparents' generation. It's great for sort of strengthening bodies and muscles, like you said. Yeah. Um, but tell us a little bit about PBB Virtual because, I mean, it's, it's oh, perfect. It's such a great initiative for right now. And I think you're bringing a lot of joy into people's homes, enabling yeah. them to stay active and stay connected and feel that camaraderie, which so clearly yes. comes through in your classes. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, the fact, however, that we're all exercising at home and in our sitting rooms, and how do you think that our attitudes towards fitness have changed right now? Do you think we're going to come out of this thinking differently about how we work out? I do. I really do. I think there's going to be a shift in the industry. Every studio, every gym or every gym and studio that I know of have gone virtual. Every trainer has gone virtual. And I think this is brilliant. It's not only brilliant because we can bring what we do into your home, into your living room, but also because you've got now the experts out there or people that you've been connecting with through social media who couldn't get to your classes. Exactly. And this is not just so that they can physically do the exercise. I think, again, I want to go back to that whole community. So in everyday life, we have community. We go to work and we have our work community. We go to the shop and you have a little bit of a community. We go to your, little, your area or your suburb, you have your community. But we're restricted with our community right now. So I feel like we've outreached not just to the PBB community that we have, which is quite big within Southwest London, but we've also reached out to people from all over the world, from literally everywhere, Ethiopia, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Spain, Portugal, the list goes on. And that is so lovely to see and so nice for me and the trainers to see because we know that we're 
not only delivering a physical well-being, we're, we're delivering a mental well-being that comes with that whole sense of community. So at the end of the class, we have our little chats, you know, you feel connected. Yeah. Um, and it's very important to be connected because we can all feel a little bit isolated, whether you're living with your family, and I've got mayhem going on here at the moment, I've sent them all out. <laughs> but anyway, you need that, you know, that other contact. You, you can't just be isolated, or if you're living on your own, indeed, that's even tougher. Mm. So, yeah, they really look forward to that hour, or that 45 minutes, either to get away from the children, to get away from their own routine. If they're furloughed, it gives them that sense of confidence that they're actually doing something for themselves. Um, and also routine. Routine is very important in these times, I think. I, I agree. And what, what's so nice mm -hmm. about your class is, however, is that you do still give people the option to turn on or off their camera, which I think is great yes. because, you know, you turn on your camera if you are, are up to doing yeah. that and you, you get that camaraderie, you get that sort of community spirit, don't you? And, That's right. And also I've You're discovered it stops you from cheating. <laughs> you can <laughs> be there say, in your you from going off see you. <laughs> oh, that's so true. Yeah. Um, I've loved I mean, it. With, with most of us who have been to a, a mat-based Pilates class, you know, we're all familiar. There's a lot of equipment. There's Pilates rings and dumbbells and resistance bands. And I mean, what, what if we're doing these classes from home now? Are there, are there any sort of creative alternatives to yeah. all of the traditional kit? All about improvisation. <laughs> so the Pilates ball, you can use your, your, children, your child's playground ball. You can use a, a football or soccer ball, what do you call it over here? Football. Football, soccer ball, it's a bit hard though. You can use a cushion. <laughs> um, I've seen really weird contraptions like, what is that? What are they using? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Light hand weights can be water bottles. <laughs> it can be water bottles filled with sand. I've even seen gin bottles, wine bottles, <laughs> you know, and at the that. end of the day, you can create your own load. So if you see there, you can't see my muscles. I've got no load. But it's that whole mind-muscle connection. So you have to think about loading. I, I always say to my clients, know what you're using, use it or you lose it. Isolate it. Yeah. I mean, it's so clever as well because your workout can basically be done within the perimeter of the yoga mat as well. So it's perfect Absolutely. for Absolutely. Just um, you, your mat and your energy. <laughs> exactly. And, and Paula, yeah. you touched on posture earlier, which I think is really key. As you said, you know, so many of us are, w are working at new setups. We're sort of perched at the kitchen counter or at the dining room table. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, well, Pilates is great for this, but what are your tips? I mean, how can we okay. be, be mindful, more mindful of our posture yeah. right now? I love this one because it's so quick. So a lot of us slump. So you can't see the bottom half of me, but when you I slump, your pelvis tucks under. That's what I call a no. This is a no. I say to the client, that's a no. <laughs> this is a yes. No, yes, no, yes. In order to get into your yes, which is literally your neutral spine, very simple. Magnets, opposite magnets attract, right? So if you think about a magnet on your heart, mm -hmm. think about one magnet, and then you think about the other magnet where the wall and the, uh, the, wall and the ceiling meet. So that's all I want you to think. Let's try it. So we're going to put our magnet there and you're just going to sit in that slump and then just think about your magnet radiating to the opposite magnet. What happens? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Your chest rises. You sit taller. It's that easy. You're creating God, that's space. That's so good. My spine feels so, so much good. Longer. I love that one. Yes. It's like magnet, magnet, chest. Chest, I, opposites attract, right? Sometimes. I literally just heard anyway, my spine click in about 10 places there. It's brilliant. So as soon as you do that, your chest muscles open. You can't mm. lengthen your clavicle bones, obviously, but they appear longer. Your shoulders go into alignment with the hip. And obviously, you're then sitting taller. So we always want to think about sitting tall. Your mum or our mother said, sit tall, chest up, shoulders back. Same thing. She was right, right? So chest up, chest up. Shoulders automatically go back. And when you do that, your chin kind of draws back. So it, instead of having that forward jut, that brings it back immediately. And then you also need to think about, I'm gonna stand up here. So you need to think about standing up, space and space. So you've got mass, your head, you've got space, mass, and then between your rib and your hip is space. What happens when you lose your space? I call that quasimodo. We don't wanna look like quasimodo. We're there. Yeah, so it's very simple. It's sitting up and out of the hips, 
chest is lifted, natural curve. And when you're in your natural spine or your neutral spine, that's when the joints work at, joints work at the optimum, muscles work at the optimum, and you reduce stress on the joints, you can reduce pain, and obviously, hopefully, no injuries. And then, and also, come, then that you integrate the breath and the core. But I don't think we've got enough time for that. <laughs> you <laughs> no, need to come to What I was going to, to say, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone needs to go to your classes. What I was going to yeah. say is how amazingly that affects, I'm sure Sharina and Fiona would also agree. You know, you sort of, you improve your posture and your lymphatic drainage can start going better. You know, your breathing is better. So posture really is at the root of so much that we need to do to sort of keep ourselves on an even keel. Um, fabulous. Thank you so much, Paula. And I think we'll all be seeing you in your PBB virtual classes any day now, mm -hmm. probably tomorrow morning. Right. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> Speak to you Welcome. later. Bye. And to our third panellist, Fiona Lamb. Hi, Fiona. Hello. How are you? I am really well. Thank you. Very excited to see you here. Um, so Fiona and I met um, a couple of years ago and I was actually one of Fiona's clients. I don't know if you remember Fiona, but yes, um, I do. You, you probably can't say patient confidentiality. But it anyway, was, I, it was about four or five years ago now. I was thinking yeah. about it. Mm. Exactly. And the reason that I came to see you was because I was biting my uh, fingernails really, really badly, um, which interestingly is something that I started doing immediately after that lockdown was announced. And um, so mm. I wonder if it's just an interesting place to start, you know, why it is that so many of us are, are sort of picking up these anxious behaviours and, and old habits now that we're in this slightly uncertain time? Well, um, I think anxiety is fear. And I think we're flooded with so much fear right now and everything's so uncertain. And I think if anybody does have any underlying if they're fragile or they have any underlying habits that they revert back to when they're feeling anxious and stressed, people are just, you know, falling back into those old ways and habits and coping strategies. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we need to do another session on that so you don't um, revert back to it. And I know, it I'm losing my fingernails. Because <laughs> the longer we leave it, the more deeply ingrained it gets. So we kind of want to deal with it sooner rather than later so that you don't form those strong neural pathways and then, you know, because we, we, we've done so well. So, yeah. No, that's really interesting. Yeah, because you're right. It's very much about that neural connection, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. sort of the little signals that just sort of get you back into that old routine. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, and I'm sure you'll agree, a lot of the stress that we're experiencing right now comes from, you know, constant news, constant media, the state of the world, the pandemic. Um, and for a lot of us, it's, it's not necessarily known when any of it will end. So I suppose, do you have any tips um, on, on how we can sort of drown out that unnecessary noise at the moment and really keep those anxieties about the future? at bay? Well I think it's, it's easy to get into a habit of watching the news. I know when this first started I was like trying to absorb all the information, looking at news, watching the news all the time. So I think it's really important to limit your exposure to that. But I don't normally watch the news anyway because it is like, too much information. And also um, social media, I find Facebook, can some, not as much so Instagram, but I find Facebook quite overwhelming. Um, people sharing things and I think it's consciously limiting your exposure to anything that's negative and overwhelming obviously there's only so much we can control and so much we can do and I think it's knowing that and just you know not exposing yourself too much because it can be it's overwhelming really if we sat and thought about it it's just you know too much so exactly. I think it's concentrating on what you can control you know we spoke about routines on things we can control and letting go of those things that we can't control mm, um, absolutely and I think limiting sort of access to digital devices exactly as you said is great I mean it's very much a double-edged sword at the moment because I think a lot of us are recognizing the the sort of power that comes from digital devices and keeping us connected to sort of friends and family I, I don't know about you but I've never spent so much time staring at people's faces on my iPad I mean you know as we're doing here tonight so mm. I guess it's, we have to sort of balance that, don't we? And, and maybe save the screen time for when it's a sort of positive, like a, a socialising aspect rather than a falling down a sort of dark spiral of BBC corona um, briefings. And to be mindful of the times of day that you're looking at the news. If you do want to watch the news, if you read it first thing in the morning, then you're absorbing it and it's going to start your day or in the evening before you're falling asleep. You know, when this first started, I was looking at the news at night when I finished my day and I was like, this isn't downtime. Watching the mm -hmm. news is not relaxing. Um, so I think yeah, it's been, what are we doing to relax ourselves? Is it going on social media? Is it, you know, it's just being more aware, I, I think, that, than ever and be 
you know, I said before, caring about how you feel and it, what information you're feeding yourself because it's so important. You're right. I suppose all of it sort of manifests sort of physically, even if we don't notice it sort of going in. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you spoke about routine and I think that's, that's super sort of key right now because it's, it's very much a survival tactic. I know that as soon as this sort of situation emerged, I, I felt very safe and secure and having, you know, whatever it was, sort of my 7 a.m. meditation, my 8 a.m. coffee, my 9 a.m. gym class. I mean, a lot of that's gone to part, obviously. But do you think that we ought to be imposing a, a sort of routine upon ourselves to manage this? Or do you think it's better that we sort of take each day as it comes right now? Well, everyone's different and I don't think there's one set way and, you know, I, people are throwing advice around, do this and do that. And it's, it's, nobody really knows you, but you, and nobody knows what's going to work for you. So I know um, my skin started breaking out and I found celery juice. I don't know if you've heard of the benefits of that. I think I'm quite late catching up with that one. I so I've been, Instagram. <laughs> I feel, but yeah, it's been around for a while, but you know, I started juicing more in the mornings and getting, walking my dogs and getting into a little routine. And it does give you a sense of control you know, when there's nothing you can control. And, um, but I just think everyone's different. Some people find, you know, putting pressure on themselves is too much. But, you know, I do think also booking in things that you look forward to. At the moment, nobody has anything to look forward to. And it's those looking forward to events and seeing people that we can keep us happy and keep us motivated. So I think it's important to schedule some things in as well. So not only do you have your routine, but you're planning things a little bit because it's really hard right now because we can't really plan things. And some people exactly. like to plan. Um, yeah. So I think it's just trying to be adaptable you know I think it's all about adapting we, we just need to learn to adapt to the times now um, but just everybody's different so I think it's knowing what you need and yes yeah, sticking to it really I think I need Sharina's at home facial and Paula's body bar and your meditation app right now and um, but Fiona you're um you know you're, you're probably seeing with a lot of the clients because you're still working virtually with your consultations mm. am I right yeah you're probably seeing a lot of people who are you know that their homes are now the place that they work it's where they they sort of live it's where they're homeschooling children perhaps and I suppose you know now that our homes are the sort of be all and end all for us it means we're spending increasing amounts of time with other family members and and it can be really difficult to sort of step back and and have some space to yourself and I suppose put yourself first and do a bit of self-prioritization so do you do you have any sort of tips for us on how we can make our homes feel calm and safe again um well the routine I think is important and I, it's, I think it's different for everyone I did have one client and she was getting really railed by a husband let's put that politely um and I, I i said you have to be considerate to what other people are going through and kind and supportive towards other people they were living in spain his mum had skin cancer and she can't get treatment at the moment because of covid so it's it, it's it's just being mindful of other people they use that word but respectful and knowing what other people might be going through as yeah. well and also i don't i think just implementing routines i think getting creative together as families i've seen people doing that which is nice using your imagination in a more productive way um you know using separate parts of your home like that's important when you're on your own that's as well so true. it's so true actually i think you're right i think if you can sort of carve out your separate stations your workstations mm. the place where you do your phone calls so you're not sort of under mm. one another's feet so yeah. have your own space but also then i suppose celebrate those times when you do come together yeah. I mean, my partner sort of laughs at me because every dinner I'm sort of lighting candles and, you know, sort of dimming lights and it's all very romantic. But I think, again, you have to celebrate those small things, don't you? Yeah. And that's that's the key to sort of staying positive in all of this. I mean, following on from that, there's also, um, and I think Paula mentioned this just now, um, there's a lot of data at the moment actually showing that people were lonely before COVID even hit us, which is really sad if you think about it, um, mm. that a lot of people still feel very lonely even when they don't live alone and they mm. are still surrounded by people. Um, so I suppose for, for those of us who, you know, those people who are now forced to live in a physical sort of isolation, how can they stay positive? What are the things that they can do to sort of keep themselves focused or um, sort of feeling connected to people? 
Well, I live on my own, apart from with my dogs. Um, <laughs> but I think... Are amazing right now. <laughs> yeah. My cat is getting so much attention. She hates it. Um, but I think if you can't be happy by yourself, then you'll never, no one else is ever going to make you happy. You can't search for your happiness externally. So it's getting to know yourself without sounding too cliche, but getting to know yourself, this is the perfect time, you know, to know you and know who you are. And, you know, I'm a bit of an introvert, I think. So I recharge by being by myself and I'm so creative when everything quiets down and I've been making and writing so many meditations and I've really been trying to make the most of this time. So um, when, you, when you're living on your own, I think it's, you know, making sure you're staying connected. Some people are extroverts and it's knowing that. Do you get your energy from other people? Do you recharge by seeing other people? And I we recommended to a client the other day, go out and even if you see people, you know, just wave, wave and say hi or speak to your neighbors. Like I know my neighbors, I don't know about anyone else, but I've really got to know my neighbors. <laughs> we go outside and clap for the NHS, we're there for a lot, we're clapping for a long time. Um, so I think it's, you know, if you do recharge from other people, make sure that you're getting that connection. And like I said, using your house and using the space really effectively. So I had a little, I've got a meditation corner. I've got a place that I might do my yoga. I've got my yoga mat. I ended up um, in the spare room watching Netflix on the spare bed the other day. But it's just using, you know, finding different corners of your house. And I moved my furniture around to get my yoga um, be able to put my yoga mat out. And I was like, oh, it's like a different house like moving my furniture around. So I think it's just getting creative really. Agreed. And, um, I think great for the creative headspace right now. You know, mm -hmm. whatever new, I know this isn't necessarily applicable to people who have children. So I apologize for that. Um, but you know, for, for myself anyway, I found, you know, it's, it's a nice opportunity to remember how to cook again. I don't think I was cooking meals properly up until, uh, you know, the past three or four weeks. And, you know, I ordered a, an at-home calligraphy set, which still hasn't been open but you know we're playing chess and doing puzzles and again I think it's remembering how to connect in those little ways and you know or, or doing that sort of by yourself writing a journal um yeah. that's another one yeah I, I was doing a gratitude journal actually of just two pages um in the evenings I'd sit down and write everything that I'm grateful for because you can't feel love and fear at the same time you're speaking about cortisol or fear going on gratitude is you know you're feeling love you, you can't feel love and fear at the same time so when you focus on everything that you're grateful for it can be really really calming god that's so interesting I had never thought about it that way. Um, finally, Fiona, so um, you mentioned earlier that you're the creator and founder of the Mind Detox meditation app. So, I mean, obviously you're, you're a hypnotherapist, but obviously you can very much sort of tell us about the positive effects that something like meditation can, can have on us right now. Um, why is that? Why is meditation something we should probably all be trying to do? So what happens when you lower and slow down your brain activity from a beta state, what we're in normally, to a theta state, which is a more relaxed um, awareness, we can take control of our thoughts. And anxiety is just from fearful thoughts. So if you can care about how you feel, I say that so many of my clients, care about how you feel, notice what's going on unconsciously. And sometimes people have a lot of trouble quietening their mind completely and they can put a lot of pressure on meditation you know i can't quiet my mind i've got too much going on but it's just being aware of, of what what's happening for you and like i said getting to know yourself but when when you quiet your mind when you let, let go of thoughts or choose your thoughts deliberately using your imagination you change your state and when you change your state, you, you, you change and build those new neural pathways. And there's something called neuroplasticity that you can really change your response to life and what you attract. If we're really going to, you know, the law of attraction, how we feel manifests in our outside world. So I, I think it's just gaining control of your thoughts at that deeper level and being aware of what's going on for you internally. And I know when I, um, when this all first started going on and I started watching the news, I think it was 500 people had died in this field, something was right at the, when that was happening. And I, I cried in a meditation. I was like, I didn't realize how much it was affecting me because I'm quite an empath and I take it all on. Um, so I think you process, it allows your mind just to process things that unconsciously you weren't really aware of. So theta state is the same brain activity as hypnotherapy, um, but it just allows you to go into that relaxed state yourself. 
And I think people think of meditation as something quite romantic and, you know, the Buddhist monks do it, but everybody can do it. It's just learning to take control of your thoughts and not letting your thoughts control you. Because if you have any anxieties and stresses and worries, it is only your thoughts that are causing that. That it's, it's very much a, a fear of things that haven't even happened or maybe it's rooted in the past and therefore it's over and it, it's, it's certainly not about sort of being present or being mindful yeah so fears beyond we can fear the unknown we can fear not being in control all those things that are kind of we're worried about right now and fiona i think if i remember correctly you were going to lead us in a very short meditation um, just to sort of end and keep us all feeling calm and, um, and yes, I was, so I'm going to put some music on yes I just wanted to do a little technique um, a little like exercise so people can learn to take control of their thoughts to know that we always have our breath that we can calm ourselves down with our breath and we're always breathing our breath is always there. It's not an extra thing we need to add to our to-do list. So we're just learning to slow down our breath because when our minds get busy, our breath can get busy. So I just I'm, got some relaxing music. So You're very relaxed already. This is something else you can do in your home. Put relaxing music on. It does relax everyone. Okay, so just everyone can close their eyes. Just focusing on your breath, focusing on your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. And I want you to notice where you're holding any tension physically. So we can hold tension in our jaw, in our shoulders, and in our stomachs. So just loosen any tension there now. Just allowing the breath to flow through your body. Breathing in and breathing out. And I want you just to imagine any thoughts just lifting and drifting away, maybe like balloons as if they weren't your responsibility just for now as if nothing was your responsibility just for now and you could surrender any cares and worries and problems you could simply let them go this was your time away from the outside world this is your time to let go breathing in and breathing out you need to force the breath just allow it to flow through your body Breathing in and breathing out. There's nothing to evaluate, analyze, judge or control. Our minds like to solve problems. But just give yourself permission to have to have nothing figured out. Just for this moment. This is just your time. Breathing in and breathing out. Feeling the softness of your breath. The softness of your thoughts. The softness of your muscles. As I can bring you back to more general awareness feeling grounded, settled, and in control of your thoughts, knowing that your thoughts do not control you. You are so much more than your thoughts. So as I count up to five, bringing this peace, stillness, up to the here and now. One, two, lighter and brighter. Three, four, whenever you're ready, five, you can open your eyes. Need to leave that with that some music. <laughs> that was amazing. I don't know about anyone else. I feel utterly sedated now. So chilled, like I've just had like two glasses of wine or something. <laughs> So it's just, so what happens when we meditate is we activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the opposite to our fight or flight response. So you're changing your state. Well, that was amazing. I feel well and truly changed. And so does my state. And um, thank you so much, Fiona. That was super cool. And I hope that everyone else um, found time to just stop and breathe for a second. Probably the first time that anyone stopped and breathed all day. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, so that very neatly brings our um, Beauty Triangle webinar to an end. So thank you everyone who tuned in. It's been a fantastic conversation with some much needed positivity from our panel. Because um, I think actually now more than ever, as, as our conversation has gone to show, positivity is really what is necessary in this period of self-isolation. Whether it's sort of taking the steps to do an at-home facial, um, whether it's sort of revving up our endorphins or whether it's just, you know, sort of learning how to breathe again. So, um, yeah, I guess, you know, 
going forward it's about staying connected to our friends and our families but it's also as Fiona said about sort of staying connected to ourselves and I suppose if there's a silver lining that comes out of this quarantine it's that you know we have a little bit of time for reflection and to grow and to plan and yeah to sort of look after ourselves a little bit. Um, before we turn to some of the questions that have been coming in over the past hour, I'd just like to remind you that when you do leave the webinar, you'll be um, faced with a, a little questionnaire, which basically is just our way of gauging sort of how you found this evening. So please do take the time to um, sort of list your responses. There is also um, a place where you can leave your name and your email address if you would like us to connect you with Sharina, Paula or Fiona directly. Um, I think that's it for me. We're going to turn to some questions now. Can see quite a few that have come in. Well, this is exciting. Um, Paula, this is one for you. <clears throat> I've heard Bart is really hard and I'm a bit worried and a bit embarrassed if I am on Zoom. Would I be able to do a class like yours? Absolutely. Our classes are multi-leveled. So we have normally it's beginners, intermediate and advanced. So I don't really like to say beginners, intermediate and advanced. I usually like to say multi-leveled. So if you're a newcomer, Obviously, I wouldn't send you into the lion's den into like a burn or a cardio bar. You'd start with a dynamic Pilates flow or a signature class. And as I said, it's multi-leveled. So if you do come into a Zoom class, be really mindful of listening to the modifications. Obviously, the modifications are brilliant for newbies. Um, and then we can also progress for the more advanced or the regular PBB goers. So like I said, it's multi-leveled for everyone. But yeah, just try not to go into like a cardio bar or a burn class. So learn the foundations first with dynamic Pilates and the signature, which is our, our foundation class. And then you can start to up the ante. To and then you up the ante. We like to up the ante. <laughs> oh yes, we do from tonight. Um, <laughs> Next question is for Sharina. You talk of a time to perhaps up, oh my God, so funny, up the ante with skincare routine at the moment. But would you say that it is also possibly a time to relax our skincare routine as I'm not wearing makeup and I am becoming a little lazy? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh my God. I think she has a point. <laughs> she does have a point. Yes, you do have a point out there. But you know, the key thing is we have a cell cycle. And our cells turn around every four to six weeks, depending on your age, your skin type, and, and so many other different factors. So if you really think about it, we still need to focus on the very basics. So I look at skincare like, start with the bookends. We still need to clean our skin every day to remove any dirt or debris, you know, back in the old days when there were still buses going out in central London, there was a lot of pollution going on as well. So maybe it's time just to introduce a little bit of a cleansing regime so mild glycolics, mild salicylics, just to keep the cell turnover going and taking it again next level. And at the end of the bookend, you've got your sun protection. Now I'm a stickler for sun protection because we have UVA around us all the time. So those are the A rays, we can't see them and they cause photo aging, they cause pigment, etc. So I always say prevention is better than cure. So bookend, cleansing, a little bit of SPF, that's all you're gonna need, keep it simple. Trina, on that note, I've got a very quick question for you. Um, I keep getting lots of emails about, and this might just be PRs who do the PR for SPF, but a lot of people who are saying we should still be wearing SPF inside. What are your yeah. thoughts on that? Absolutely. You know, as you think about it, UVA, again, I bring it down to the two different types of ultraviolet. There's A and B. B are the bright rays that you see outside over there. They're bright. They bounce against your skin, especially when you're outside, and they give you that golden brown color and they can make you burn as well. So they can, over a long period of time, if you're excessively burning, give rise to the, the, you know, the skin cancers. The end of the spectrum, A rays around us all the time. So here in England, you can't see them in the winter, but we still capture them. They don't just bounce off your skin, they go through the skin layers. So when they go through the skin layers, guess what? They affect and influence the collagen. They cause changes to collagen, loss of elasticity. They also cause pigmentary changes as well they cause symptoms that we call photo-aging. So I always say SPF, and you know, I have family back in Malaysia, friends in Malaysia, they still don't understand that we can catch UVA rays here in England. So I always say sun protection all the time, keep it simple. Perfect. I've just got another question that's come in for you, Sharina. Can you recommend a good salicylic acid product? The lady doesn't say um, for, for what exactly, but yeah. 
Sure. I mean, you've, you've got a broad selection nowadays. You know, back in the old days, we had very few ingredients. They used to be they used to be a lot more harsh on the skin, maybe like 10 years ago when we didn't have as much choice. Now there is a broad range to choose from. Um, I have three lines in the clinic. One of them uh, has a salicylic base, which is fantastic for an oily prone skin or prone to breakouts. Um, it's a brand, if you don't mind me saying, called Eyes Clinical. And the cleansing complex within that is fantastic. And it's also a botanical, so it's not going to be too aggressive on the skin. So I think if you're just starting out somewhere, beginning anywhere, that is a good one to start. It's called cleansing complex. Super, thank you. Um, quick question for Fiona. Do you have advice for how to get started with meditation? Perhaps a simple exercise is one of the questions that's come in. Um, a simple exercise. So meditation is, if you have a very overactive mind, people can find it overwhelming. Like how am I going to quiet my mind and what are the benefits of it? But it's using your imagination in a more productive way. If you just see it more like that. So a what I do with clients, if they have really overactive imagination to get them in a more relaxed state is just imagine, I call it mind tennis. Just imagine batting thoughts away as if they're just not your responsibility for that moment. And that's quite a good technique as well. When you're trying to sleep and your mind's really busy, just using your imagination in a more productive way rather than it spiraling out of control. Perfect. So we've got some questions coming on the Q&A and some on the chat. So I'm just trying to field, field them all. Um, Sharina, are your online aesthetic skin consultations to stay even after the lockdown? Yes, they will. Absolutely. I think this is going to be the start of something that will continue for, well, we'll just continue full stop. Mm -hmm. As I said, you know, a large number of patients of ours come from very far away. So this is a great opportunity for them to uh, connect with us from far, as well as new patients who are interested in getting started, begin anywhere, as I said. And then if you really think about it, post lockdown, where do we go from here? We don't have any guidance as yet, but we do need to start thinking about best practice procedures for the future. And I think limiting the number of times patients come in when we can by doing follow-ups online where they may not necessarily need to come in, we can check in with them on skincare optimization, and even just seeing where they want to go from there. So those kind of seasonal changes. So I think it's a great opportunity and we should embrace the change. You know, Fiona and Paolo said earlier, you know, to be adaptive in the situation, be creative, find the new balance, find the new norm, and implement all of this into our best practice. I completely agree. I think, you know, sort of we should all be recognizing this as a, as a time to sort of learn new tricks and learn new skills. And, and there's absolutely no reason that can't follow on when we're out of this situation. Out of interest, Paula and Fiona, are you both, maybe we'll start with Paula so no one speaks at the same time. Are you also planning to continue virtual classes? Have you? Absolutely. That far yeah. Yes. We've had many requests for it. And in fact, we're also well, I, I, I filmed yesterday for On Demand. So we've got three set classes during the day, but how, however, not everyone can make 7 a.m. midday or 3 or 5 p.m. So they'll be able to download the classes on demand also. No, it's, yeah, it's, so it's been it's, a big it's in, Angela. Of course, and I, and I suspect a lot of people are saying that it just fits into their daily, daily lives and routines yeah. so much more easily now. They don't Save have to time. travel. You know, shower at home, <laughs> travel. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Fiona, same with you? Yeah, so I used to do, I do lots of online sessions anyway, because I've got lots of clients in America. Um, and people like it, you know, there's no travel, so they can do it from home. They can, yeah, so I'm, it's just the same for me, really, apart from not in the clinic seeing people. Um, but yeah, it works just the same. Lovely. That is great to know also. Um, some more questions just coming in. Another skincare one for you, Sharina. Won't glycolic acid dry out dehydrated skin on the face even more? Great question. I think we must always go back to the cause. And, you know, at the clinic, what we do is we go right back to the cause using a detailed consultation. Uh, during the consultation, we want to ascertain how long somebody has been having dehydrated skin for, what are those trigger factors? There is always a trigger, uh, whether it's previous use of topical skincare, whether it's underlying stress. And interestingly, um, in the last six months, I was auditing my patients just literally by asking them to rate their own stress levels. And most people were scoring seven out of 10 and uh, on, on a daily basis. So although we think we may be calm, 
when we're high performing, whether it's with our kids, with our family, whether it's in business and beyond, um, there is that underlying stress that I think we need to accept. And so again, going by what Fiona was saying, um, there's so many other things that we can do to adapt to those situations. So we always go back to the consultation, it's key. We marry that consultation with the Vizia skin analysis. That's a digital imaging tool that we can see. So it's not just about starting somebody on a glycolic regime. I think if we establish that there is a disrupted skin barrier, if there is an inflammatory process that's been going on for a certain period of time, then, and there is a lot of dehydration on the skin, it may not be the right time for a glycolic. We may just need to soothe, calm, hydrate, and protect the skin for one, maybe two or three skin cycles and slowly escalate that protocol. And that's why a detailed consultation is key. Begin there. Agreed. Detailed virtual consultation for now. And um, following on from protecting and hydrating the skin, a lady has asked if she is able to use coconut oil on her hands or should she be using something a little uh, less oil based, I suppose? Oh, goodness me. I mean, you know, I'm all for botanicals, I'm all for home remedies. And, you know, again, I think if it's a good quality coconut oil and it's come from a good place and it's uh, non expired, again, I think, look, you want to use something that's going to be an emollient or an oil, a uh, petroleum base, you know, things like that are going to be very beneficial. And uh, as long as it's, you're not going to be cooking with it, that's really important as well. So be safe. Keep it in the kitchen or in the bathroom. Um, final one, I think this might be again for Sharina. My skin has flared up since lockdown with dermatitis and spots. I presume stress related. Is there anything you can recommend, Sharina? Okay, so I think if you've had a past history of a dermatitis, it's worth going back and reviewing with your dermatologist. So um, if you are known to a dermatologist, you know, check in with them. They may be doing virtual consultations as well. And I think if you've got a history with somebody, please go back there. Alternatively, you know, really just look at what you're using on your hands or your skin. You might be using something that is a little bit too harsh. Again, when we go back to the topic of the hand washing, keep the soap in the water, use a petroleum base or glycerin product on your hands. We have one at the clinic, I have one upstairs. I'm using it every time I hand wash because you need to be protecting your skin even then when you're going into the, the next thing that you're going to do whether it's working, whether it's looking after your children, you don't want to go out with dry hands because they will crack. So I would say get to the root of the problem. The other thing that we're doing a lot more now is we're also doing a lot more house cleaning. So think about the bleaches, the products, uh, the, the, the things that we're using to clean with, they can be very stringent on the skin. So you want to protect your skin with a good emollient before you go on to your other household tasks. That's really important. I, I believe that you may have a trigger and if you really just trace back, you know, you want to be a bit of a forensic now and see what may be potentially influencing your skin, that would help. Otherwise, yeah, do contact me. I'd love to see a picture of uh, what's going on with you. I'd be delighted to help. Thank you, Sharina. Um, one for Fiona here. Um, I'm having problems sleeping as a result of constant anxiety. Are there any ways that you think I could get a better night's sleep? Well, what stops us um, sleeping, I think, at the moment are a few things, but it's making sure that you're getting daylight and we need, we need daylight. We're like plants. <laughs> so it's making sure you're getting daylight and maybe try there's meditations on the app for sleep, but meditating as you're going to sleep with that technique that I told you about of batting away your thoughts, slowing down your breathing. There's um, the four, seven, eight breathing technique. Um, which is quite good. You breathe in for four, you hold for seven and you breathe out for eight. So that activates your parasympathetic nervous system. And also feeling grateful as well. Your gratitude before bed can, you know, really shift our state before that, you know, away from fear. So there, there are a few things, but there are meditations on the app you can listen to. Meditating is great because it puts you into that theta state and below theta is delta, which is sleep. So when you meditate and go into a meditative state, you're very close to falling into delta that's great thank you fiona um one for paula my children want to spend more time exercising can they do your classes with me and if not how else can i make exercise fun for them <laughs> do you have your microphone on paula can you hear me now we can Sorry. hear you. <laughs> I turned it off because I was getting worried that the family was going to run through the door. <laughs> but anyway, I'd have, to, this question. I'd have to say, 
Mm, it depends on the age of the child. So I did think about launching a teenager's class. And for my two sons, I've had them doing... So here's a plug for Joe Wicks. Joe Wicks does a daily PE class, which is formulated for children. Um, I'd have to say anyone under the age of 16, I'd be wary of online unless it was a personal training session. But, you know, they can join and do a few bits and bobs, but maybe not. Hold a few planks, do a few sit-ups. Yeah, but again, it's like sometimes the clock... Sorry, I'm just trying to see everyone. Sorry sorry. about this. Technical... Sorry. still here, don't worry, and we can still hear you. So, yeah. So I'd have to say... um, because Pilates can be rather technical I, to avoid injury. Um, and there's often quite a lot of people in the class. So with children, even in the real world or in the studios, we don't really allow anyone under the age of 16. So if there was a specialist um, personal training session, 100%, I could do that. And in mm-hmm. fact, I used to be a PE teacher back in really? the day. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day, in my 20s. Okay, so, so until you set yeah. up your kids' PBD, yes. Joe Wicks, it is. I've, I've seen so Joe many Wicks. kids, so many kids doing that. The whole um, world's doing Joe She's basically Wicks. every parent's babysitter right now. Um, That's right. Here is a question for Sharina. Should you look after the skin on your body like you do your face? How do you feel about salicylic glycolic for the back? Oh, great question. Great question. I know we've not had a body, a body related one apart from hands. Yes, absolutely. No, I think that's a fantastic question. Thank you for asking that. Now, you know, if you think about what are the most exposed areas, you can see with all of us, face, neck, chest, depending on how low you were, and then top of the arms, and then back of the hands as well, commonly exposed areas. So they tend to get the most amount of TLC and love because they are the most vulnerable, exposed to all the elements. And when we look at the back, we can see a lot of patients who are struggling with back knee. So excessive oil production, which is giving rise to blockage of the pores, also because of the friction of the clothes, the hair, and us just being bundled up, especially here in England with all of our layers as well. The skin may not be breathing compared to maybe if we're living in, in warmer countries. So yes, you're absolutely right. If you are struggling with excessive oil block pores on the back, blackheads, or even as much as pustule secretions, then yes, I think applying a salicylic wash combined maybe even with a bit of glycolic will really help because you are then lightly and gently exfoliating that dead skin off. So you can do that in the shower. You may not even need to have a brush because that's incorporating mechanical. It might be a little bit too much, but just getting either yourself to do it or getting even somebody else to do it for you Uh, will be really beneficial. Give yourself the benefit of time. I think Fiona used that word, you know, be sympathetic and kind and compassionate to yourself. We all want results yesterday. Let's face it, it can't work that way. So you need to give yourself a little bit of time for those cells to regulate, to accept the ingredients and the formulations. Two, four, six weeks. That's what a one skin cycle is. And you'd be surprised at how much result that you can get. So yes, we do offer that similar cleanser that I meant earlier to the back and it works really well. That in combination with in-clinic procedures to mechanically exfoliate the dead skin work extremely well. So we have a treatment in the clinic called the hydrofacial and we have a back knee protocol. And that works brilliantly as patients are coming out of the winter where they've been all bundled up and all of a sudden you're coming into the summer where everything's exposed and it's like, oh my goodness, what do I do? So, you know, at home, skincare, in clinic mechanical exfoliation with the hydrofacial perfect and as you said give yourself time and i think that's exactly what we all have on our hands right now sharina yes um i think this might be our last question and it's it's one more for you sharina can you recommend a good spf that protects you from all the rays so uva and uvb well if you'd like to know what i'm currently using at the moment which i've been using for uh, a very very long time since i started the clinic i'm using the extreme protect spf 30 uh it's from a brand called is clinical i use it from that one you like that yeah <laughs> I, use, I use it for a number of reasons number one it does what it says on the tin it's a broad spectrum uva uvb so guess what i'm covering both of those uv rays that i'm I, i'm not happy about so it gives me that photo cover Next thing it also does is it gives me hydration. Now, I'm not the kind of person that likes 
too much luxurious products on my skin. I just need enough. I don't have um, too dehydrated or dry skin. So that gives me the hydration as well. So I've got sun protection, I have got hydration. And then the other thing it's also got, it's got something interesting called extremozyme technology. Now, what that does is it bubble wraps the DNA of the skin and it sends it repairing in time as well. So at the end of the day, when I think about me being alive for a certain period of time now in my life, I need a little bit of help to take things backwards. So if I can repair some of that DNA, then I'm getting a really nice three in one hit. Perfect. Well, thank you. I'm going to dig out my eyes clinical SPF. Um, that must be in need of a spring clean as well. Um, I think that's it for the questions, but thank you, ladies. Um, it's been absolutely amazing having you here. And I'm really grateful to you all for bringing so much light and positivity into our evenings on such a beautiful evening as well. I think somebody had some birds twittering in the background. It was so soothing. I wasn't sure if it was one of Fiona's like meditation soundtracks or something. <laughs> it was lovely. Um, to everyone who has tuned in and been with us tonight, thank you so much. It's been amazing to have you here with us. Um, I hope to see you all again at future events or webinars. Um, if you're not already signed up to our mailing list, please register your details. It's thebeautytriangle.com. We'll keep you updated on everything we do, webinars, in-person events, podcasts, um, opportunities to, to put you in touch with these wonderful ladies should you have any further questions. Um, I think that's it. So thank you everyone and stay safe and stay positive and good night. Good night everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Stay well.